Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, so today I had a go at the Sunday Times' very hard prize Sudoku. And um, you've obviously got a chance to have a go at this. I've put up the puzzle on um, our software and that's linked to in the description. So do have a go at it before I do and see how you get on with a very hard Sudoku. Now, um, the other obvious thing, the obvious housekeeping things that we like to say, I do remember to subscribe to the channel and um, feel free, if you can manage it, to sponsor us on Patreon where there's a bit of extra content for those people who do um, each month. So, without much further ado, I'm going to have a go, well, I'm going to watch my earlier solve of this very hard Sudoku. So the cursor you see moving around mostly is the cursor I was using when I solved it on the Times Zone website. And I put a timer on down here to show you what's going on. That was quite a good starting spot. This six is um, the only possible candidate in that cell. Now, I don't normally use cell-only logic. Um, preferring to look in the shoots and find out where numbers have to go within boxes. But that was a useful start. And as you can see, within half a minute, I had two boxes completely full, most of this central box done as well. And um, that all came from an instant spot of that cell being very useful. So a really helpful point. Um, not particularly difficult, I would have thought, but uh, fairly straightforward. Now I was, as often happens, you get a bit of a kind of um, reaction to that. I don't quite know where to go next. Now, if I'd spotted that this nine forces a nine into one of these two cells, I could have put a nine in here, for instance. But instead, now I've gone to the note-taking methodology that is available in the Times is software, and that's enabled me to spot that the restriction to of two to one of these two cells in this box gives me a two here and a two here. But now I'm looking around for other things to do. I think it took me a bit too long to spot that this box has two, four, three down that column. Um, why was it a three at the bottom? It certainly was, and there wasn't any guesswork here, but. I don't remember why that was entirely obvious straight away. Sorry. Um, so, but anyway, that has helped finish this top box, at least to the extent of having a 5-3 pair over here. As always, pairs that share cells are very powerful. And then 2-4-6 is a triple here. So we know that 9-7-5 is a triple here, but it's not that useful because there's only one 9 in the boxes either side at the moment. Oh yes, 3 had to go there because with that 3 there, it was the only place left in this box. That's right. So now I've put in where 1s and 2s would have to go in this top left box. The 2s have only got 2 cells left and the 1, 2 cells left and they share 1. Now that does become useful a bit later. Um, again, I'm looking in this bottom right box. Again, the ones, threes, and eights are each limited to two cells apiece. They all overlap. And you're kind of aware at this point that it would just take one breakthrough to get this puzzle finished. Um, so I've looked in this bottom right box. I've clearly looked in this box heavily. Now the top left box. I think now I move over to the top right box. Sevens um, and nines, actually, are the key to this top right box. Have a look at the sevens and nines. And you will see that where they're positioned in row two and column eight mean, as I'm filling in now, that there's a seven nine pair in the two remaining corners of this box. And that means that four becomes limited. That's helping with the four, two, six, triple there. We've got one, six and five to place so the ones where they are place that one. And suddenly that's that's made those one, two notations very useful. We can place the one, therefore the two in the top left box. That fixes the remaining two six pair here. That six fixes the remaining two boxes up here. Why are there shaded squares, you may be wondering. I think that's just for the purposes of um, the Sunday Times doing a prize. They all, those are the cells, I think, that they would check if you send in a solution, something like that. They're not actually relevant to the solve, and they don't appear in the version that I um, saved for you to have a go at. 
So then we're able to f finish the, uh, the numbers that we put in as possibles down there. The six there carries across to a six there and a six there. Um, now the fact that we can put in a nine here because of the nines in columns one and three has finished off this box. That's finished off the central top box. That almost finishes off the top left box. In fact, it does. We can do that eight and five. And now we're just following round to finish off the whole grid. And I have to say, although there was a fiddly bit in the middle after the good start with the central boxes, um, just entered a wrong number there, incorrect. I can't see why this puzzle was designated as very hard. It, it appeared to me to be anything but. You know, to even call this a fiendish level at the times would uh, strike me as going a bit too far. And there we are with the finished grid in just under five minutes um, and solving on software. That's a pretty fast time for me. So I hope you had as good an experience with it. And if you didn't, have a look again at my solution path because I think it's quite a useful way into this puzzle. Um, certainly that, that instant spot of this cell here as being um, a, a naked single was a very useful start to the puzzle. So that's this week's Sunday Times very hard puzzle and I put it in, solution, in uh, quotation marks because I don't think it was very hard at all and I hope you found the same. Thanks very much for watching on Cracking the Cryptic and uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye.